Hey, everybody. This week on Up Your Alley, we've got two great recommendations. First of all, my recommendation for Jake, the new book, short st- or a short story collection, Glory Days by Simon Rich. Jake's recommendation for me, the skate punk album, Hitler Bad, Vandal- or Vandal's Good, Hitler Bad. Hitler Bad, Vandal's Good. Hitler is bad and Vandals are good by the Vandals. <laughs> no, you said it wrong again. You said it like an old man again. He said Hitlers are bad, <laughs> Vandals are good. The Hitler, Vandals are good. Hitler bad, Hitler Vandals bad. good. It's w- just four words. I think it, I'm wondering if saying Hitler this many times right at the beginning of the podcast <laughs> is going to mess up the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We got some monster movie news and Jake bought a whole bunch of random video games. You got anything else to add? No, no. Nope. No. <laughs> Ooh, lights are flickering. Lights flickering. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the podcast. It's called Up Your Alley. My name is Taylor Egger. With me, as always, is my best friend, Jake Baggett. Say hi, Jake. Hey, buddy. I got to say, I think I'm, I'm too relaxed now. Yeah. So this is week two of recording <laughs> at Jake's house. We are on separate couches. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a little too relaxed at this point. I'm feeling <laughs> yeah. less professional. He's splayed. Yeah. He's doing the... Uh, George Costanza. Gr- no, the, Jura- <laughs> the... I was going to go with Jurassic Park. Um, oh yeah, the Ian Malcolm. Yeah, 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 yeah. When Ian Malcolm's laying down, a little injured. A little bit of that. It's, if you're sort of, uh, first time for the show, thanks for stopping by. We are normally more professional than this, but uh, we recommend things to each other. We come back the next week and rate them on a scale of one to three based on how much it is up our individual alley. Jake recommended me an album by the Vandals, and I recommended Jake a book by Simon Rich. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. How you been, bud? It's been all right. It's been fine. Also, we've got uh, storms rolling through the area yes. as we're recording this. We're so playing chicken with a storm right now. I mean, I think I've got some battery left in this, yes. so it should last for a little bit. We have uh, Those aren't rechargeable batteries. Those are oh, I know. commercial batteries, right? I know, and I have not changed them, so we'll have to we'll play by ear. We might have something. <coughs> I'm, not, I'm not super worried about it. We'll figure it out. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, so yeah, what's going on with your video game thing? You told me that you just bought a whole bunch know. of random video games. They got me. So who got you? Uh, video games. They got me. What are you buying? The them first on? thing that I got, I got them all on Steam. Okay. The first thing that you doing I Steam got, Deck? Yeah, I got it right here, right cool. next to me. But I I play it off. I stream it oh, okay, basically okay, okay. from my computer upstairs. Yeah. My big brig. That's what I call it. I just call it computer. Fair enough. But uh, there's a game called Gas Station Simulator. Shut up. No, and there's I, not. Yes, there is. And like, I worked at... Well, to be fair, I've played Pressure Wash Simulator. Yeah. And uh, Lawnmower Simulator. Yes. <laughs> and I don't know why you were immediately like, that. that's the line. Because <laughs> I don't know. I feel like there's... <laughs> but I worked at a gas station, you know, So is it just for Clark- a while. Is it Clerks the video game? No. Almost. So but what are you doing? Well, you, you're off of some western state, off of 66. You have uh-huh. an old gas station and the first thing you do is you just start filling up gas for people when they come through and then you start buying shelves to put product on it so you run in the register that you pop outside to fill up the cars and you is run it, back to is the it register. made in like the same open source unreal engine like the uh lawn mowing simulator and everything are yeah they all have that same kind of aesthetic a little bit like that yeah how many hours you put into this game over the past so night? this one's probably got about 18 hours into it <laughs> oh my god and i had to stop yeah it, you it did got, it got really good but because I was getting money. When? When the new flavored Doritos came out? Well, I got uh, so many. Oh, my God. Speaking of that, when oh, I was geez. working at Wawa, uh-huh. we had the ketchup flavored Doritos come through. Yeah. That's that a is Canadian thing. The best Dorito, period. They don't make it anymore. I've not had it, but it was I, limited edition. I'm going to go ahead and disagree. The guy brought me six bags because when our Lay's dude would show up, I'd be like, you got to give me a couple was it, of wait, those ketchup. Was it ketchup Lay's or was it ketchup Doritos? Doritos. Actual Spicy Doritos. Spicy ketchup Doritos. Triangular yeah. Doritos. Yes, sir. Huh. And, On a corn chip. I, thought, yep. I would think that was more of a potato chip. No. No, they took it one further. Hmm. They gave us a... <laughs> They're always pushing it to the extreme. They made mustard and ketchup flavored. Ah, gross. I didn't try the mustard because I don't like mustard, period. Mustard's a loser. And the only reason I tried ketchup was because one of the uh, other employees that's there, he's like... Jacob, you have to do it. He's like, I can't be the only guy that's going crazy about how great these ketchup flavored chips are. I did make you try the hot fudge flavored 
yeah. Liquid Death last week. So and that kind of checks out. Yeah, if people want me to try stuff, I'm just like, yeah, okay, I'll try it. You're that kid. Yeah, we're smart. You'll, you'll eat a bug yeah. on the playground. I mean, if it's food, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> Which means worms and boogers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> food for somebody. <laughs> Birds got to eat. It's the most purest form of nutrition food there is. So true. Anyway, so, continue. So I, it got to the point where it was li- like managing a gas station because uh-huh. I had three employees and we were busy, like, all the time. We were popular. Right. So I was running around. I was making sure that my customers were happy, my employees were happy. I was like, I have to stop. <laughs> this is becoming my job again. You put too much time into it. I was having fun when it was just slow, and I was just checking people out, and just role play yeah. to be like, have a good day, ma'am. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But then I was making thousands of dollars an hour, and I was like, I have to stop. Really? Yeah. You get too corporate? You just start doing stock well, buybacks just and because, everything like that? Yeah, I was just getting stressed because I was succeeding so well. Why? Because I was like, I can't not have any of these bars go down. I was oh. in the green everywhere. So it's the, the I was, desire to keep it up yes. at that level. I had the gas station, yeah. I had the register, and I had a car wash, and I had... Uh, repairs going maintenance. Yes, so someone, I was running around making sure that all that stuff steamer in the doing bathroom, well. and you got to send. You know, oh yeah, I've picked up your something out of the bathroom, kid. and it was a poopy, and I was like, oh gosh darn it, that's in just, the game. Uh, yeah, god damn it. Yeah, it's a good game. It's really good game. The kid that works where he's smoking marijuana out by the dumpster. <laughs> I and you gotta wish. Go. The employees are actually pretty darn good. Well, then it's obviously a simulator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing. Yeah, they should have it. So you're like that guy's. Clearly, <laughs> See, on heroin. I also also spent some time in manning a gas station, but it was like a rural gas station. So you have people yeah. show up, and like I was cooking there. So like yeah. same guys would show up at like five thirty every morning. And I give wish them their this bacon, game has that. Cheese. It might have that. Yeah, but that's the one aspect of it that this was, was like, big in our gas station yeah. experience. Our, our our gas station was far enough away, and it's wide enough. It was people filling up, like literally people drive up on a tractor and put. You yeah, know, the gas into it and everything like that. Yeah, really. At least once a week, two guys on lawnmowers would come in, just like driving their <laughs> lawnmower <laughs> from <laughs> nearby neighborhoods. People got time, man. Man, it was, it's the country. It was nice. That's what I'm talking about. It was nothing but like the cheapest, where we, where we are in Virginia, it was nothing but like the most rusted out crap car and then people in like the nicest BMWs, Mercedes, yes, <laughs> like ridiculous amounts of money. An Escalade like you, on a dirt road, right? You you would, you would see like an F one hundred and fifty from the early nineties that had like rust all around the wheel wells, and on <laughs> yeah. the other side of the pump would be like an Aston Martin, and you are like, "This is a strange place yeah. to work." <laughs> like yeah. different clientele. Yeah, we are in a wonderful place. This this county of ours. Pretty so, what other games? Well, that game came in a bundle because they're like, "Hey, you got to save money." Can I guess what the other game is? Was it like those? You're never gonna guess it. But you remember go like, ahead. The, like the DVD packs in Walmart where they're like, "Here's three movies." It's a are, lot like that. Like very here's, much like that. Here's Deep Blue Sea. And Jaws I will 4. say you don't have to get the title of it, but if you can get what the uh, what the what the game is, yeah. I'll, I'll give you a point. Okay, so with Gas Station Simulator, I'm gonna guess yeah. is. Uh, like Burger Time or something similar to that? <laughs> no. It's uh, called... Open that surgery one? That VR surgery game? <laughs> no. <laughs> I could not play something like that. Is it something like Hello Kitty Island Adventure? <laughs> Surgeon, it does deal with blood. Well, it's most called... video games do. It's called Crime Scene Cleaner. Oh, Jesus. You play a guy who's working for the mob. So you're not even the fun part of CSI. You're the part of CSI who doesn't He's trying to up. stop the CSI. Wait, you're working for the mob? Yeah. So you're just not even the bar. You're not even the bad part of CSI. You're before CSI shows up. So you're sure freaking place looks Harvey good. Keitel in Pulp Fiction. Yes, <laughs> just yes. showing up and taking care of business. But it is so good. You're post Hitman. I, Hitman. So you're the kind that comes yeah. in after Hitman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> to make sure that his, his name stays on the headlines. <laughs> That's it. Fantastic. So I would play that game. It's fun. It's very fun. It's funny. <laughs> the uh, the guy that you play as. Uh, he sounds like Batman. He sounds like Kevin Conroy for some reason. He's got a silly sense of humor. Yeah. But like the first place that you go is some apartment where uh, three people were murdered, and you're cleaning it up. And I'm just out at the window on the balcony looking at my pickup truck down there is where you put the bodies. And I'm like, I can definitely chuck it in that bad boy. So I'm sitting there <laughs> jo- throwing bodies off the building into my pickup truck. That's good stuff, man. All right. That one, that one sounds kind of fun. Yeah. Definitely more interesting than... That's the one that I actually started Wawa playing. Simulator. That's when I saw the bundle. I was like, I got to play this game. Oh, for sure. And it was it's definitely worth it. For sure. The other one, I don't think you're going to be into, but this one is a game from a company that I enjoy. 
I can't remember the name of the company or the developer, but he made a game called uh, Heat Signature, which was a really cool uh, game on Steam. And they have a new game out called Tactical Breach Wizards. What's that? <clears throat> so it's a uh, tactics game, turn-based, where you play a couple of wizards that are like on the uh, SWAT side. It's kind yeah. of like a urban fantasy type of game. Uh, the game designer is Tom Francis. The developer is Suspicious Developments. Suspicious Developments. Apparently yes. they made a game called Gunpoint as well. Yes, Gunpoint is also very good. Yeah. So I was like looking forward to this game. And I've been playing this for a little while, and it's really good. Huh. I'm having a great time. It's a game where you just try and set up all the moves beforehand. You can always rewind time yeah. for your turn to try and get it a perfect turn going. Mm-hmm. So you kind of like stay at one spot trying to figure out what's the best move for a while. It's really fun. That's it's cool. a nice little puzzle game. I'm enjoying it. I booted up. Uh, well, I got my next platinum trophy on the PlayStation. I got the platinum for Dredge. Oh, yeah? I mentioned I booted up Dredge again yeah. for the DLC. Congratulations. <laughs> It's just a grind. It's not like a complicated thing. You're just yeah. gotta catch all the fish and yeah. do all the stuff. That's why I don't, but it's, I don't really touch that. It's but. it's got a fun gameplay loop. Exactly. Like, Dredge like, is just fun to play. I like yeah. tooling around in my little boat. And exactly. It's, it's not like I got the platinum and after starting from scratch again, I think I'm in it for like eight hours. Yeah. So nice. It's not like horrifically bad to do. It's a fun little game. Like it's, I love Dredge. It's a really good game. They yeah. made a good game right there. Yeah. So let's uh sick. The World Cup of Esports. Yes, I don't even know anything about this. That was uh, just wrapped up. Oh, God. Wikipedia is asking me for money. Yeah. Big surprise. Today is the day. Don't skip this one minute read. Does it have a picture of the guy again this time? Sorry to interrupt, but it's Thursday. Why is Wikipedia always like, they're going to shut off our lights? Yeah. <laughs> if you don't figure this out. Because they will. Who? <laughs> <laughs> they have to rent servers. They don't, Or they have to maintain servers. I understand. but So once they don't have money to keep that going, then they're like... Uh-oh. <laughs> I disagree. Anyway, so the 2024 e- w- eSports World Cups just wrapped up. Uh, it took place in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Started on July 3rd and just wrapped up on the uh, 25th. A $60 huh. million dollar prize pool. I What games? First, there was a big backlash about this just because it was in Saudi Arabia, and normally the uh, gaming community is pretty open with LGBTQ. Oh yes, plus I do people. remember this. That's part like, of the story. Yes. So apparently, a part of it was that you know Saudi Arabia is throwing a lot of money around. They're like, hey, you want to have your big like the actual the soccer World Cup was just there. Yeah. And that had big backlash. And the soccer community is a lot different than the gaming community. <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> well, in terms of like makeup and demographic of the fan base that will come and watch sure. it, completely different. Yeah. There's a. Big queer acceptance. I mean, yeah, every, everybody. So I remember hearing about the Saudi Arabia thing because they're like, how are queer people who play and I would, esports supposed to feel about going to a country where right. it's illegal to be themselves? I'd say if you're doing a markup of like people that uh, play soccer, probably also watch soccer. I would say probably mm. 100% of people that play soccer, even recreationally. Probably watch the World Cup. Oh, yeah. Okay. I would say maybe 5% of people that play video games care about esports just in general. Okay. So I I'm just saying it's mean. a lot more niche. Mm-hmm. So the games were Apex Legends, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, Call of Duty Warzone, Counter-Strike 2, uh, ooh, Big Thunder. Here it comes. Uh, Dota 2. Yeah. EA Sports FC, Fortnite, something called Garena Free Fire. No idea what that is. No. Honor of Kings, a couple mobile games, League of Legends, Overwatch, just your basic esports stuff. None of this stuff is interesting to me. Uh, Rocket League, these games. Rocket League is a really good game. Street Fighter is Street Fighter Six was in there as well. Street Fighter Six looks like in Tekken Eight. So you had well, those are Evo events, right? So I I don't know how to to steal that fire thunder. I don't know how the gaming picture works, but it seems like they had the EA Sports FC, but they didn't have Madden, which I guess. Same reason they don't have American football in the Olympics. Like, if there's a U.S. eSports championship, I think Madden would be in there I guess as so. a competitive game. But I, I didn't don't think, think that those games were built to be competitive. Madden? Yeah. Madden's got a huge... Like I thought most that there was of the a EA lot games. of RNG in those games where it's like... 
it, you know. There's not as much RNG when you play on higher difficulties if you're playing against someone else. If you're playing I against it was the, the comp- opposite. If you're playing against the computer, they're like turn up the fumble sliders. They want it on hard. Right, but I'm saying that's you can adjust it by that. But if you're playing against another, there's a lot of RNG when you're playing against the computer. At least I found this playing NCAA football. Yeah. When that came out, when you're playing against the computer, there's a lot more random interceptions, like you know people dropping passes. Yeah. If you start running up the score on the uh, computer. Yeah. Then it's just like in Mario Kart, like you'll, they'll get a bunch of blue shells if you're two laps ahead of them. Yeah. But when you're playing exactly. against another person, it's sh- it's the same as any rubber fighting banding. game. Rubber Right. The rubber band AI. There's not as much when you're playing directly against another person. And also the golf games have a pretty strong competitive thing. And uh, Well, golf is really good, though. And, I know. Golf is fun. And, and also NBA 2K. So fun. But the only sports game in there was the FC. And I guess Rocket League's kind of, kind of a sports game. But I love Rocket League. I think that's a fantastic. I played game. a little bit of Rocket League. It's um, one of those games. Yeah. Where I think about what Carl Heisen said about golf. What's that? Carl said uh, when you're out there on the links and you stroke 18, 18 times and you miss every time, but then you hit it once and it kind of goes straight. It kind of goes ninety yards. You're like, I could probably do this professionally. <laughs> So uh, we did for call, the Americans won for Call of Duty the Atlanta Phase Clan, so that's that's Bleh. fun. I don't, I don't know what that Screw means. Screw the Phase Clan, F A Z E. Yeah, but they're from Atlanta, so I saw that and I was like, hey, those guys are pretty uh, homophobic. Atel. Well, they're in Saudi Arabia, so <laughs> they blame uh, uh, gay people for uh, school shootings. They're that type of people. Really? Yeah. I can't. One of the Phase Clan members did that. So oh, I, so one of them did. I so apply you, that to all of them. Oh, well, that's not that's not a nice way to do things. Well, that's how it's going to get done until things change. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, I had no idea this was going on, and that it's yeah, been I going on for over a month. Yeah. So I I remember hearing about the Saudi Arabia thing now. Yeah. But other than that, I had no idea what games were being played. Good for them. It's the competitive side of video games. Yeah. Are typically uninteresting to me. It does seem like a bit of a cash grab. Yes. Not, and by a well, bit, I mean it's like, 100% a cash grab. Yeah, and it's just these people live in the same house, and they practice night and day playing the same video games. Yeah. And that's just not the lifestyle that I like about gaming. There was a... I like Evo a lot, but that's just like a completely different environment. I like uh, GDQ a lot, Love you know? Gear. Those are just two wildly more open and fun environments. Yeah, GDQ is fun because it's more just a... Uh, one person. Yeah, it's one person it, sh- showcasing to it, what but, yeah. the uh, thing is. It's more of a talent show than a competition. Yes. And then Evo, I don't know. Evo just feels like it's far more acceptable, accepting. Yeah. I think it's because it's not a team thing. I don't know. The thing that I don't like about sports, things that I don't watch sports for is because, like, you'd be like, I love the red team. Blue team sucks so much. You and don't got to like, do that accent. And then they blow up your car because you they do don't Boston, like you. You should do a Boston accent. I'm so red, you're blue, and that makes me mad. There's a famous esports thing, red versus blue. Yeah. It's one of the <laughs> best things to come out of video games. But then like, people get so heated about this stuff, yeah. and like, I do not care enough. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So just... If that's what that scene is, I like I said, I don't I have no clue. Yeah, but it just feels like competitive, which means it, there's people that are screaming so hard they're spitting in each other's faces because they lose or <laughs> win or something. Yeah. Speaking of people screaming so hard, we got two uh, monster movie news updates. <laughs> uh, two things that I well, I'm gonna see both of these. One, did you see it just came out today? Uh, there's a new Jurassic Park movie coming out next year. No, I didn't see any of that. They, it, I hadn't seen anything about it. I don't know how it slipped my radar, but it just came out. Uh, what is it? it? Came out on their uh, Jurassic World's official X. Uh, it's going to be released mm-hmm. next year. It's called Jurassic World Rebirth, starring Ugh. Scarlett Johansson and Mahershala Ali. I like Scarlett Johansson. Right. So the plot. It I t- didn't watch the last two Jurassic Park movies. They're okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're fine. <laughs> so. Uh, I guess light spoilers for Jurassic World Dominion, but not really. So tell me how you, this sets you up as a plot summary. Because they're kind of doing the whole thing like we did a trilogy and then we did a slightly different trilogy and now they're doing more of a different thing. It says, hmm. five years after the events of Jurassic World Dominion, <laughs> the plant's ecology has proven largely inhospitable to dinosaurs. Duh. Those remaining exist on isolated equatorial environments, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> dinosaurs still roam the earth? Yeah, they're loose. They're just out. <laughs> uh <laughs> 
three most colossal creatures within the tropical biosphere hold this is the contrivance which i love where they're just like why do people have to go looking for dinosaurs and like the conceit of most jurassic park movies aren't great i think the one that has the strongest one is jurassic park right the it's and the conceit of that is hey insurance is being a dick we need to have people come out and yeah. sign off on this yeah. completely makes sense yeah all of it makes sense and they make uh dr hammond uh megalomaniac yeah. who's just like spared no expense you gotta see these dinosaurs <laughs> yeah. and then they're like oh no they're killing everybody <laughs> so let me let me go out and see how this strikes you has a good plot uh the three most colossal creatures within the tropical <laughs> biosphere hold the key to a drug that will bring mal- miraculous life-saving benefits to humankind what is that how they gotta go get it it doesn't matter there's gonna be dinosaurs johansson plays a skilled covert operations expert zora bennett Contracted to lead a skilled team on a top secret mission to secure genetic de- material from the world's three most massive dinosaurs. Why is this so it's, secret? It's three Megs. <laughs> but they're di- No, but they're dinosaurs. It's the Meg because she has to go find the largest dinosaurs that have the key to the genetic material that could save humankind somehow. Why does this have to be covert? I don't know. But she's in there going in. And then Zora's operation intersects with civilian family whose boating expedition was capsized by marauding aquatic dinosaurs. They find themselves stranded on an island where they come face to face with a sinister, shocking discovery that's been hidden from the world for decades. There's dinosaurs on this island. But that's not (laughs) hidden from the world. So I don't know what it is. Why are there dinosaurs loose on the world? You didn't see Jurassic World Dominion. I did not. That is so funny. They get out. They get out, and they're like, oh, shit. Yeah, they're everywhere. <laughs> I forgot to lock the door. So it does sound very contrived, but I'm like, I don't know. Jurassic World's one of those franchises where I'm just like, yeah, all right. All right, I'll go see it. I watched Jurassic World, and I was not impressed enough no, to but where you, I was like, you I also, need more. You also hate Chris Pratt. I don't hate him, but I'm not interested in you, him doing stuff. Right. Yeah. I mean, I like Scarlett Johansson. I and, like ScoJo. I watch her do stuff. Yeah. I just and it I has against it. It does sound like it took inspiration from Meg, and they're like, "Yeah, we got to do something that's fun, guys." I, I'm just <laughs> waiting for someone to explain why they're the three largest dinosaurs, and somehow their genetic material can save humankind. I gotta know why it's not something where you could just broadcast it, and like live stream it. Why do you have to have the covert? Lady? Why is it? Shh, don't tell anybody. I mean, it's probably capitalism again. Like she probably works like it's corporate espionage. Um, like, oh, if we yeah. get it. You know, if they're working for nobody, big pharma, nobody should know that this blood's this, good. This could be a benefit to all of humankind. Yeah, let's keep it a secret. Yeah, let's keep it <laughs> a secret. Not, I tell keep anybody. forgetting that part of let's society. Let's get this gigantic it's, dinosaurs, and we're going to send in the most beautiful woman on the planet, who just happens <laughs> to be a covert operations specialist. That's a covert operations specialist. What do you think the secret is that's been hidden from decades? There's dinosaurs on this island. No, no, no. Dinosaurs are everywhere. There's a secret. I'm yeah. calling it right now. I think we. It's Jurassic Park. No, we've done this before with movies where I tried to call what happened. Oh, we mm-hmm. did it with a uh... Deadpool. No, we did it. We did it with Deadpool, but we also did it with uh, I'm at a fake Taylor Swift concert and I murder people. Uh, trap. Trap. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think we were wrong about Trap. I haven't seen it yet. At one point, I said I think the singer is the devil and he kills people for the <laughs> devil. <laughs> oh, no, that's crazy. It would have been great, but okay. I think we lost the. Ooh. Oh no, that was a big one. That was a big old thunder. Ooh, spooky. Anyway, so I think it's uh, half human, half dinosaur people. There's no way. That was originally... That's the craziest thing. That was originally the plot for, I think, Jurassic Park, or Jurassic World. That's a terrible idea. So the plot for that was they were going to use them for, like, super soldiers. Like, of course. person raptor hybrids. And that's it was the, the military industrial complex. That's the most complex. cop-out thing I've ever heard. Yeah. I used to think that it was it's, cool in games because I was like, oh, that means that they're going... Like, Max Payne. Did yeah. you know that that was the story of Max Payne? The first one. The movie? No. The I video the game. game. Yeah. There weren't dinosaurs in that game. No, but it was about super soldiers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Valkyrie yeah, yeah. was going to be a super yeah, soldier yeah, yeah. And in the original idea, you're going to fight super soldiers by the end of it. That's fine. But then they were like, we'll change it up. And we'll just make them junkies. Yeah, that's fine. I liked it a lot. That's a better idea. I know you did. Because so many people do the super soldier stuff. If somebody looks at dinosaurs like, if we put this in humans, there's no telling who they could fight. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm shocked I haven't I hadn't heard anything about it. That's a it. crazy idea. Yeah. It was crazy. I mean, it's great. And we're going to go see it. Love it. But <laughs> ideas that are not great, that also, uh, since you love remakes so much of movies. What's that? Uh, 
recently announced that the adventure horror Anaconda may return to the big screen. As in itself? No. A movie? Like or a, like a, a remake? A sequel to Anaconda. This is a good idea. It, I've told you before on numerous occasions my love for the movie Anaconda. Well, I mean, it's, it's in not that, good. In that genre of... No, it just hit me at the right yeah. time. Like Anaconda, Dante's Peak, I love. Uh, uh, Deep Blue Sea was a little bit later, but same thing. It's all late Jurassic Park stuff. Speaking of Jurassic Park, mm. like it's all after that. We're like, what can we do for that? Congo was another good one. That was another <laughs> Michael Crichton book. Bruce but, Campbell. And I loved Anaconda so much. Like I think it's just objectively a fun, campy it's a movie. movie. Like it's a fun movie. That's it. That's for sure. And I think since it's nothing fantastic, it's right. rife for a remake. You can be inspired to make a better movie out of that. Right. I like think that's they a did, great idea to make Like they did remake. with The Meg in The Meg 2. They the remade? Trench. What do you mean? Well, I'm just saying they're like, <laughs> let's do that monster movie again with like the big giant thing and then, you know, make well, a whole new thing about it. it. There's, yeah, you can have fun with it. That's the a new good God, idea. The new Godzilla movies were fun. They weren't as good as Godzilla Minus One, but they were fun. I haven't watched those. Here's where it takes a turn. Uh, Anaconda may return to the big screen with Jack Black and Paul Rudd. Oh, so it's going to be a comedy. The rumor is, this hasn't been announced, is Jack Black and Paul Rudd are two people that really liked the movie Anaconda. So this takes place in the real world where the movie Anaconda exists. Mm -hmm. So they go down to the rainforest and then they have they run into a real an the Anaconda. I don't. That looks sounds horrible. That's so. That's wild. That yes. This is like the first time that I was like interested in a remake. Yeah. And then you're like, Anaconda was great. They're not doing a good idea. <laughs> they might not be doing a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stoked for Scarlett Johansson <laughs> Jurassic World. I mean, I'll watch it. That's for sure. Yeah. That's so funny. I am not going to watch Dominion. No. And I am just going to have a good time being like, I'm going to, I might make you watch it. <laughs> uh, is there a part in Dominion where a shopkeep with like a broom is like, Sweeping out those tiny little dinosaurs, <laughs> and we're like, "Get the hell out of here!" Listen, I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mentioned on the podcast last week, Jurassic World Three is the movie I've seen in theaters more times than anything. Really? Yeah, I don't remember. There that. was a movie theater the summer that it was out. It was like the summer before my brother got his driver's license, so we were still bike. You mean Jurassic and Park Three? Jurassic Park Three, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was playing at Oakmont Cinemas on Cortez, uh, Cortez in Brainton, Florida. And my brother and I rode our bikes up there. And I think we saw it in theaters five times. Damn. Yeah. That's why in uh, The People's Joker, she has a uh, the ringtone from Jurassic Park 3. And I got oh, wow. so excited. So that was a very, very specific yeah. joke for but you. I see. Listen, I like Paul Rudd, and I like Jack Black, but... I mean, I am I have zero on interest. Jack Black now. Yeah. Because he was mean to Kyle Gass. Oh, but that, that was just for show. They're fine. <laughs> what do you mean that was just for show? It's just they had to like make all the corporate people happy. Jack Black and Kyle Gass are fine. They're fine? They're yeah. friends again? They're fine. Last week, Jack quit the band. No, <laughs> now be, they're back together again. Be back. They canceled the the tour, right? Because no one would pay our friend, for their insurance. It's a it's a Jurassic Park scenario. They have to get experts out there for the insurance. Our friend uh, Tom Walker was at that uh, concert. Oh, was he really? Yeah, him uh, and Demi talked about it. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I haven't. I'm not caught up on Big Soft Titty PNG. Gosh, I love it. I yeah. think it's one of my favorite things to listen to. It, it's a good podcast. It's I really just, good. They had a co they had a guest on it recently, and they were like, and the guest was like, "I'd like to return." And they're, and they're like, "Yes, yes." And they go, I, "I changed my mind. I don't want to come back." And they go, "No!" <laughs> and they just start crying. <laughs> I, was like, I love people. how good these people are. All right. Well, uh, you got anything yeah. else sad before we get to the the Rex for the week? No. I, right. I think we're good. Let's get into the Rex. Let's start with your recommendation for me. Yeah, boy. Uh, the 1997 album Hitler Bad, Vandals Good by the Vandals. Yeah, man. So Vandals was a big band for me growing up. Yep. And I took a lot of their uh, philosophy to heart when I was a kid because they are very, uh, what do you call it? When you don't believe in anything. Nihilistic? They're very nihilistic hmm. about what they feel. A, a line that they say a lot is nobody ever asked to be born. Yeah. So just live your life type shit. What m it came back recently on to uh, Spotify, right? Right. And while I was listening to the albums again, it was when the song uh, My Girlfriend's Dead came on. Yeah, that's kind of their... That uh, I remembered... That one uh, broke through a little bit in the mainstream. That was 
we were going to perform at a bar one day. And Sounds we were, like us. We were looking at, at songs that we could play, and uh, I started playing My Girlfriend's Dead while you were setting up or doing something you're listening to. It, it was like, that song's really funny. I was like, that's from the band. I was like, oh, I've never heard of that. And I was like, yeah. oh, it's one of my favorite bands. You should check them out. And then that's when I was like... So you've like, been saving this recommendation Arr! for 15 years now? No, it just like re-sparked into my brain oh, gotcha, when gotcha, I saw gotcha, that gotcha. it was on Spotify. Yeah. And I was like, oh, let's get them to listen to Vandals. Yeah. So like I said, uh, I've heard the Vandals before, I'm sure, on punk compilations. Yeah. And definitely just, uh, you know, listening to that kind of music. Yeah, right. Um, it, it's a good record. I, I listened to it a couple times. Uh, it's, a, it's a quick record. It's not long <laughs> at all. I mean, most most records from that... That time, yeah, yeah, punk records do not last longer than 45 minutes. Yeah, it's it's 14 songs, 36 minutes. So, Hell yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're in and out, but that's that's just punk. Uh, so it's gonna be a two for me. No, nah, okay, I liked it. Mm-hmm. I think, and this is like, uh, we've done a couple different punk things, and I've talked about it. Uh, this is more of the so, well, I think they're from Huntington Beach, California. Yeah, this is more so Southern Cal, California, uh, and it's punk. There are some. There are some like no effects songs that are like funnier songs. Yeah. And I really like those. Like no effects has a song called uh, see her pee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's just a song about wanting to watch a girl go to the bathroom <laughs> and they have very funny things, but it's just, it's not my favorite kind of punk. Yeah. It's very good though. Like I really enjoyed listening to it, but this isn't, it's yeah. not a three, like holy shit. Like I, I love this. Yeah. It's definitely great. I, listened to I the thought album. it was going to be a good one for you. I thought it was going to oh, be yeah. three, honestly, because I felt like it was like, oh, this is something that he just missed out on when no, no, we no. were growing up. It, it, it's good. Like but I really liked sense, it, but it's, it's definitely yeah. not like a SoCal isn't your style for. I punk. mean, no effects is. I'm really yeah. more. I like my California punk band has always been Rancid. Yeah, sure. Like that's always been my go to, which I do like a bit more of the not so much tongue in cheek making joke stuff. Yeah. Which I do, like some of that stuff as well. Like. Uh, See, I always like that stuff. Like the less cynical like, side of it. Yeah. Less than Jake Lagwagon. They have some mm-hmm. funny songs like that. It's ve- it's all very you know, Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Hell yeah, vibe, which I really like. Hell yeah, but it, it's just a two for me. I did put them on, uh, shuffle, and then I found one of their albums that I actually liked better than this one, which is yeah. why it's a two. Yeah, <laughs> it was their earlier one. Uh, Live fast diarrhea. Yes, live fast diarrhea is probably which I actually liked my favorite one. So you should re- live fast. Diary well, is a three. I was gonna see if my girlfriend's dead was gonna spark no, I, something in your brain yeah, where no. you're like, oh, I remember Jake playing that. Jake, I was like 24 and <laughs> yeah. we, we were in a bar. I yeah. don't remember things <laughs> from that time. What are you talking about? I was hoping. Remember that thing I said I to you tr- in a bar 14 <laughs> years ago? I was trying to do some <laughs> some no! therapy type shit to you, Jacob. <laughs> Well, That's yeah. when they started mixing vodka with Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember anything from that time. No, the Fast Diarrhea is really good. No, record. yeah, yeah, they're good. I think my favorite songs were. Um, oh, and also the the sense of humor joke would remind me a lot too. Is a lot of earlier Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah, like they had, like they had a song about Princess Leia and shit like that, and they had like little skits. I mean, Vandals doesn't have skits in between their songs, but mm. just that like not taking yourself too seriously kind of. It's the opposite yeah. of like your Black Flag Minor Threat punk rock. My favorite song. Oh, you go ahead. What's your favorite songs on there? Um, my girlfriend said, obviously, great song. Yeah. Uh, if the government could read my mind, I'd be thinking about you. Yeah. That that's if the just, government could read my mind. That's just cute. That's a funny <laughs> thing. Uh, and then. The other song that I'd heard before was uh, I've Got an Ape Drape. Yeah. A song that's just about mullets. Yeah. I've which, got an ape drape. Yes, I do. That's just a great uh, punk bar sing-along song. Yeah. Like, okay, that one's... Giving it to anyone. That means you. Yeah. It's it's not melodically groundbreaking or anything like no, that. It's just fun to sing. Yeah. And it's very straightforward it's punk, a, too. My like, favorite bridge which is short in the front and long in the back. Right. <laughs> that stuff. It's very... It's almost cartoonish in yeah. the way they do it, but it's it's fun. Yeah. It's just not my favorite thing. I like the uh, I Found 20 Bucks song. Yeah. That song's probably my favorite one. The thing that threw me off about it, that I was uh, I was driving the first time I listened to it, and... They got to their uh, the last song of the record, mm. which was a cover of uh, "So Long so Farewell" long. from The Sound of Music. There's your big connection. That to... okay? So let me walk you through it. it yeah. I took it. And I was just like, "Holy shit!" And I was like, "What? Hold on!" And I was like, "This is from is it like from a TV show?" And for some reason, in my head, I kept thinking it was from the Man Show. <laughs> and I'm like, 
this isn't how they end the man show. <laughs> and I was like, no, it, but I was thinking just because like the German beer steins and everything like that, it, mm. my brain kept making that connection. I was like, huh, this mm-hmm. must be the end to the man show. It, because for some reason in my head, it was just stuck with me with like high school and yes, everything sir. like that. Yes, sir. Not, not so much high school, but like everything. Like, well, when we were driving in cars early in the morning. Right. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, yeah, this must be the man show. Like when the man show was on back when Jimmy Cable and Adam Carolla were both sane <laughs> instead of being sane. Yeah, but they were just... Have you seen the man show? <laughs> well, I guess sane was a relative term. When, so they, they, when they weren't on completely fucking... opposite sides of the spectrum. Jimmy Kimmel is now sane, I would say. Eh. Yeah, I mean, like, he wears a suit. Okay, funny. <laughs> Back when they were both funny. There you go. When they were funnier. Have you ever had Adam Carolla's Mangria? No. And that was that was the moment when I was like, I don't think this guy is a... He's not well. ...a, a fine person. Because I saw... Uh, I used to watch Getting Dug with High... Yeah, and uh, Adam Carolla was on there, and he's like, "I bought Mangria because it's San- a pretty good Adam Carolla brush. Sangria makes me think that I'm a woman, and I don't want to be a woman. I want to be a man, but I like Sangria. That's a strong, <laughs> confident, masculine man, right there. Yes, right. Yeah. Where you just like, I can't go to a shop and like Regardless, give me Sangria. We're way off topic. I'm sorry. So, the end of it, and then it <laughs> finally clicked on me. It's what they play at the end of yeah. every episode of Elliot in the Morning. Yep, DC 101. Uh, yep. Watched it, DC area shock jock. Yep, that cover, and I was just like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> like I loved yep. it just for that. Yeah, right. It's so, a really good cover, no, though. Did you pick this just because of the Elliot in the morning? No, I mean, I knew that you would like that too. Oh, uh, I picked it because of my girlfriend's dead. I oh, really okay. thought that that was gonna make a connection to you. No, absolutely. Did I not. knew that the it took biggest... me a long time to listen to pick out Elliot in the morning. I knew the biggest connection that you would get would be the. Uh, yeah. The, Goodbye so long. Yeah. So long farewell. It took me longer yeah. than I w- than it wanted me to. That's amazing. Yeah. But once it Damn. clicked, I was just like, oh, shit. That's... It's because they st- they don't say uh, to taste my first cocaine. <laughs> and that's like in Elliot the Moore. They're like, he loves that cocaine. He loves that cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> and if they did do that, I wouldn't have got it. <laughs> but it was great. It's, um, I would also say that uh, Warren Fitzgerald is the guitarist for the Vandals. And I think he is one of the most accomplished guitarists to ever live. Yeah, the band's great. Like his guitar playing is so cool. I watched him perform live, and he was playing the guitar. He was doing a solo. And, Where'd you see him live? Uh, Warp tour. Oh, okay. And he would uh, take one hand while he was playing the guitar and shove it down his shorts, and then pull them up to his shoulders, and then he would switch to the other hand, and then he would have just his ass hanging out. Why? playing the guitar because he's a really weird guy a very silly band i watched uh they would say uh anybody with a vagina get up on stage and dance with us and they go what if i got a butthole with a vagina tattoo on it they go that's good enough for me <laughs> classy classy yeah. dude i love that stuff man yeah. no it's good it's a two like it's definitely a fun listen put it on the car hell yeah it's fun uh, music yeah it's a good one. I'm glad I sat down and listened to it, like, because, like I said, I would that wouldn't have listened to a whole one of their records. Yeah, right. Good to know they're back up on Spotify. Yeah, you pop the Vandals on there. Yeah, Kick It is a really good song. Nimby, I love that song. Mm-hmm. That song is just a great story. What made me really happy is as soon as it, you know how Spotify, like, when you're done with an album, it'll just like cut to something similar. Yeah, it Im- immediately switched after uh, the So Long Farewell to uh, Keys Be Nights by Catch Twenty Two. And I'm just like, oh, that's such a better song than all of this. <laughs> <laughs> and I hadn't listened to Catch-22 in a while, so I started Aww. listening to Catch-22 a I lot. I wanted to get you caught. No, it's all good. But yeah, it's a two. It's a two. Thank you for making me listen to it. Wonderful. Uh, let's talk about my recommendation for Jake. The book, Glory Days Stories, it's a collection of short stories, mm. uh, by author Simon Rich. Yes, sir. So I gave this to you just because uh, I've been trying to do more books. More audiobooks and stuff. It's one of the reasons I'm behind on podcasts like BigSoftTitty.png. It's because <laughs> I've been listening to just a whole bunch of audiobooks. Right. Um, this one clicked with me because I think it's a perfect audiobook. Uh, Simon Rich was on Late Night with Seth Meyers a couple weeks ago talking about this. And I had known Simon Rich. I've never read any of his books. He's got a couple books out. But I knew him as a frequent collaborator on SNL with John Mulaney. Like, they were two guys that were writers, but Simon Rich, unlike Mulaney, had no interest in performing. Mm. <clears throat> and he was also on a episode of Neil Brennan's podcast, Blocks, which was really interesting because they're not, like, friends. 
but they're both writers. But Neil Brennan obviously likes to perform as well. Yeah. But he started as a comedy writer, not a stand-up comic. So yeah. them talking about that and Neil Brennan just being completely flustered by the fact that Simon Ritchie's like, so why don't you want to be famous? <laughs> like, I don't understand. Simon Ritchie's like, no, he seems like a really normal guy. His parents, uh, he went to Harvard. He's one of those smart, funny kids that went to Harvard, like Colin Jost to Conan O'Brien and like that mm-hmm. version of guy. And I like, mean, yeah, he's got it going if he just needs to write funny stuff and he doesn't even yeah. have to get into the limelight. And he kind of has a like a George Saunders vibe where or, uh, that sounds like a great that he, he great just, deal. He just wants to be a writer. Like yeah. he has no interest in being you famous. Just write funny stuff all day. Nobody knows who you are, and you get money for it. That sounds awesome. He could have walked into your fake Wawa, and you would not have known who he was. Exactly. But I would have treated him just as well as everybody else. You sure would have. <laughs> That's why you run the best <laughs> fake gas station this side of the Steam Deck. <laughs> but I thought it worked out perfectly as an audiobook too. I, I gave you a physical copy because I'm a nice guy. <laughs> but uh, as an audiobook, the last audiobook that I recommended to you, this is how we lose the time lo- time war. Yeah, the production value on that was so great that it almost worked as a radio play. Yeah, and this one works because he got John Mulaney to do the audiobook. Yes, so I think everyone should read the book. I really think everyone should listen to the audiobook. It's available. You can get it if, on Spotify Premium if you've got Spotify. And John Mulaney puts his heart into all these vignettes. I would say it's a master stroke to He's, get John Mulaney to read these. Yeah. He breathes life into these characters that mm-hmm. I would not have seen otherwise. And it's definitely something that, like, everyone has their own little inner monologue when they're reading a book. After you listen to one chapter as John Mulaney, you're like, oh, this all works. And then you remember that Simon Rich was a writer on SNL with John Mulaney. So it kind of, the fact that they knew each other so well. Mm. John Mulaney can sit there and read Simon Rich's book. He's like, I see what you're doing. I yeah. see I see that's, where the joke is. You can here. absolutely tell that there's a synergy happening. Which is something that's very important when you're doing a comedy audiobook because you have to you can't just read it straight or it's mm-hmm. n- it's boring as hell. Yep. That's also the problem sometimes like But uh, you also can't just be, you know, silly voices no. the, the whole time because then that gets annoying. Right. Mm. And this is varied enough to where it's I think the shortest or the longest one, if you're listening to it, is like 20 minutes long. Yeah. And it's a really good mix of stories between six minutes to 20 minutes. Right. And there are a couple that are 20 minutes that have like voice. Like I mentioned it last week. There's one of this that's all done in it's from the perspective of Mario. Yeah. Super Mario. And John Mulaney does. And I went in on you because they the very one of the first jokes is hitting your head, hitting his head on the brick. Yeah. On the blocks. Yes. Uh And now I like that's done a number on him. But I knew you would like this because, one, the sense of humor, and also Simon Rich has, uh, he's a couple years older than us. He's 40, and he just is at that kind of elder millennial mindset where you do get nostalgic, but I think there's some generations older than us, I think they get uh, angry when they get nostalgic, especially like some of the boomer generation, where it's like, why aren't things the way they used to be? Yeah. This makes me upset. I think a lot of our generation, especially the writers that I've read from our generation and a little bit older, when they get nostalgic, they get kind of sad. Yeah. Where it's just like, oh, that that really sucks. Yeah. That I'm old and that kind of sucks now. He kind of puts it in his words really well. Right. It's like we were supposed to be the generation that, and it's that changes things. It's that kind of humor that I know you respond to where it's just like, Making a joke, but he's like, "It's all right. Well, we'll laugh about this, I guess." <laughs> and I was like, "This is really gonna so like the name of the show. This is a really up Jake's alley." I thought. I thought you would like to be able to listen to it little bursts while I came out the gate hot about the Mario take. Yes, and I was like, "How can you not understand what Mario is doing?" Yeah, what he lacked in knowledge of Mario, he made up for in wonderful storytelling. Yeah, and great on we about aging. Yeah. Every story is incredible. It's a great little midlife crisis book. It's a great little midlife crisis yeah. book. And the Mario story is so good yeah. because it's about getting older and how your body's changing and how awful it is. I love the part with <laughs> the, the- Princess Peach's boyfriend. He has the, the hand tattoos. It's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> He's a DJ. <laughs> it's so good. How is he going to save you? It's like, and she calls me, she texts me her place, and she is like eight fucking worlds away. <laughs> 
<laughs> but the part where he's like, and I go to my doctor and I beg him for a cortisone shot for my back, and I am in pain and I am screaming, thank you, because even though I'm in pain, I know that this is better than what it feels like. Yeah. I was like, this guy knows what it is yeah. to be like, my body is failing me and this sucks because I want to keep up with the lifestyle. Not only do I want to, but I have to because right. that's the only thing that I've had. Right. And it's kind of desperate at this point. And then it changes because he hits rock bottom. Mario hits rock yeah. bottom when he steals Luigi's Amazon. Luigi <laughs> and his new uh, husband. Yeah, Luigi's husband, who's a business guy. He's like, he reads business books for fun. Yeah. <laughs> business success marketing for fun. And he's like, uh, they catch up with Mario in the hospital. Right. <laughs> and they're like, it, Mario was like, they're like, we're going to do everything that you can. You can live with us. We'll do everything we can to get you back. Right. Uh, it's uh, like we saw you thing. take the package. And he was like, I have to tell you that, you know, uh, I would I would never forgive myself if I didn't tell you that I took your packages. He was right. like, we saw you take the packages. Yeah. He was like, it's Luigi okay. and his husband are like, like very comfortable. Yeah, and they, they're like, very open. The and you can tell that Luigi's husband was such a good influence on Luigi himself. Yeah. And that's the change that Mario didn't like. And this story is like 12 minutes long. Yeah. But it's so good. It's so good. The shorter ones, let's breeze through a couple of them that I like. Uh, there's one. I think the funniest one in it was uh, called The Emperor's New Clothes. And That's a really good so one. So it starts out the same parable as always, the emperor's new clothes. But then when the little boy calls the emperor naked, yep. the emperor's just like, no, no, I'm into this. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, this is me now. <laughs> I Bring like, back the tailors. I like that you're all watching. Yeah. Bring back the tailors. I want a tight suit. Like not, not bondage tight. But as close as you can. <laughs> but I guess close and leave my ass hanging out. There's a great one. Um, the one that made we're it, not so different, you and I, where it's a super villain great. named Death That one's Skull. beautiful. Yeah. Yes. And he's trying to make friends in his 40s. And it's John Mulaney so... does a fantastic Skeletor yeah. when he's doing Death Skull. Essentially, it's Skeletor, Doctor Doom. It's like every yeah. super villain kind of yes. put together. He does a really good a 60s yeah. cartoon. It's that. Uh, ah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're not so different, you and I. We're the bonely ones here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Calm down, guys. It's not that funny. And there's such random minutiae in that. Like, the Death w- Skull has two uh, henchmen. Yeah. And he's like, oh, well, I'm not going to put you in more toxic waste. And they're like, you mean you could tote us back? Yeah. He's, he's like, like, well, no, that's not like, how toxic waste works. He's like, and if you guys, he's like, hey. Like, I'm having a get together at my place. You guys can come. Don't feel obligated. Gonna, everyone keeps telling me I would like Rick and Morty. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess he goes, he takes over the airwaves yeah. to talk to his new friend, Greg, because he didn't have his number. Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> on every channel being like, I have to tell you, I watched a couple episodes of Rick and Morty, and yeah. yes, I do like it. <laughs> um, the one that made me wheeze with laughter. And it's because of John Mulaney's delivery. I wouldn't have taken it any other way if I read it. Can I first. guess? Go ahead. Was it kerosene? No, kerosene was fantastic. Though. Kerosene reminded me of a uh, something that would be written for Will Forte. Sure, like in that yeah. area of SNL. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Which one? It's uh, the New York City uh, personified. Oh, the city speaks. Yeah, the city speaks. Yeah. Where he's like, when you wake up and you piss down my throat, the gutters are my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's why I was saying how good of an audiobook it was. Like, don't yes. get me wrong. To, none of this happens without Simon Rich writing it. Yes. Well, it's just, like you said, with the synergy, yeah, these two. Because they wrote together are for. Clearly simpatico. Like, they, this stuff, like you said, John read this stuff and he's like, oh, I see exactly who you're going for mm-hmm. and I can make this happen. Right. They used to spend, they would share an office at SNL. The way that. And come up with. Like, hey, we have to be funny, like, now. So what Simon thought's funny, John Mulaney thought's funny. And even though back then, Mulaney, well, he was still doing stand-up and stuff, but he wasn't like a, uh, he, wa- he wasn't today's John Mulaney. Yeah. Uh, still had that talent and everything, and he's always been a very talented guy. But it's just that, it works so well together. Mm-hmm. It's, it, you know, it's like a, a director and an, uh, an actor working so well together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's like when, when you yeah, see each other's vision. When Scorsese and DiCaprio work together now, it's just like, yep, I, I yeah. get what you're going for. Exactly. We've done this before together. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm on it. One might even be writing it for with them in mind. Yeah. But one just might be inspiration for the other. Yeah. It, I don't understand the secret sauce, but it works with them yeah. so well. Right. Uh, there's another long one about Goliath, which I thought was funny. Goliath, Goliath really hit good. me because Goliath is just... It's David and Goliath, and this is something he talks about in his podcast with uh, when he was on Blocks with Neil Brennan, because Neil Brennan's just like, how do you like 
do you sit down at your computer and like think I'm going to write a sad story about getting old? He's like, no, sometimes I just start writing and I'll be like, oh yeah, robots are weird. (laughs) And then by the end, it's like really weird commentary about, (laughs) you know, how technology is kind of ruining our relationships with each other. And it's just like, oh, so he's just that guy that kind of could just sit and write. He crafts. He's a a craftsman. Geniusly funny guy. I can't recommend this uh, enough. Oh, wait, so it gets gets a three. It's a three, absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's 100%. I love the story of the uh, old man. Yeah. With uh, talking to the prince of Nigeria. Yes, back and forth. And yeah. like he does voices for both sides, mm-hmm. you know, and then the old man's giving him this whole thing. And he's like, my, oh, it's called the mission. Yeah, the mission. Yeah. And he's like, my daughter took my keys away and I walked into this, but I walked to the bank to get you the money. I tried to do it today, but my hip is acting up. I had to get my daughter to help me down the stairs. Mm-hmm. And then it was <laughs> the letter from Nigeria to him. It was like, Please send forty thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm sorry that your son had been kidnapped by ninjas. Yes. <laughs> uh, the other one that I really liked, and I have these grand ideas sometimes when I'm doing stuff like this. If I had any bit of like filming, like being able to be a director, do you remember the story Minutes, mm. where it's it's Minutes from an HOA meeting, and essentially yes, the HOA meeting that's goes so Im- funny. Immediately, it's written as the like. Both board members present are blah, 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 blah. And it's very, like, by the book, dictating minutes. Yeah. And it's just... Uh, a murder happens. A murder happens, like, immediately because one of the board members is sleeping with the other board member's <laughs> yeah. wife. And then it's just the secretary taking down the minutes of, like, hiding the body. And then yeah. the groundskeeper comes in and they try to bribe him. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to get that a lot. Really? It's so bad. These hooligans. Dude, it's so bad. Yeah. They're racing in the rain. It's my next door neighbor. Can I, can I say this? Too fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too furious. Slow down. It's both. Uh, if you're going to be fast, at least don't be so furious. Can we have a little more reasonable speed and yeah. nice to everybody, <laughs> yeah. gentlemen? Uh, it ends with one called Hey Millennials, which is just, that one hit me right in the right in the feels, where it's just like, uh, the story's, oh, there, there we go. There it goes. And we're back. And we're back. You heard the battery backup unit kick on. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, I, I, it, the, Hey Millennials is great because it's just, like, it's a guy, and then his daughter says something about his feet being weird, and then yeah. his daughter crying because... It was she, one of those great lists. It's a list of things that, um, if you relate to any of these things... Right, that's the whole... You're a millennial. It. It's like, don't you feel old if, yeah. you know, you remember this? Like, one of those BuzzFeed things, and then it just gets sadder and sadder, and I'm just like, oh, God, this is so yeah. good. It, it, I don't know. Because well, at first it started off, It's every one of these things feels like it's going to annoy me, yeah. but then it gets really good because it's like, you know, something millennial that I do agree with, you know, it was like uh, downloading music from Napster. Waking up to see that wire. Napster downloaded? Yeah. yeah. And then, it, and then like, uh, st- uh, number three was your daughter making fun of your weird feet. Yeah. And number four was, like, your daughter crying to your wife because your weird feet made her uncomfortable. <laughs> Makes her think that her feet are going to be weird when she's old. Right. And he just starts going on that. I was like, gosh, darn it. There's another great one. It's a guy who's on a train with his wife and their two kids. Yep. And he runs into a train riding hobo. And it's just absurd. And then at the end, he he's like, oh, the, the hobo's light. telling him he's, yeah. <laughs> No, you can gaslight your wife. Tell her, tell her there was a line for the bathroom. Yeah. And he takes What's the, she gonna do? And then it ends Ask the everybody on the train. <laughs> There's another one that I could see Will Forte in yeah. that sketch. <laughs> I don't know any absurd character written doing? from that area. I'm just like, oh, that's Will Forte. Like, I like he would have masturbated that. people on the train. <laughs> like, Why didn't you do it to me? I'm not attracted to yeah. you. <laughs> it's very Forte. But how that one ends, it's so sweet. All because of them end so sweetly. The guy comes back to his seat and he sees his wife with the two kids and she's like, have you been drinking? He's like, yeah, I'm sorry I lied to you. Like, yeah. I wasn't in the bathroom. And then she's like, I'm really high right yeah. now. Like, she's I took like, an edible and it's too much. Yeah, <laughs> it is more than I thought. It, it, it like, was just one of those great, like, parenting and then the, moments. Yeah, and then the dad like, oh, was like, God. I have a great idea. Why don't we just download some games on our phone and give them to the kids? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I can't recommend this enough. Yeah, Again, I it's can't, called uh, Glory it Days by Simon Rich. so good being seen. Uh, yeah. As an aging person. And the Mario one, that's the one that hit me the hardest. Really? Because it's Mario um, readdressing his life and, yeah. r- and coming back. It's a similar situation you to me. You can't do the same stuff you used to be able yeah, to do. Yeah, exactly. And now he's got to get used to the nice, 
the the stuff, but he was also embracing the stuff that he likes about himself. Where yeah. he's like, I got a I got a nice hairy mustache and a great ass. He's <laughs> like, I have a nice ass. I got a nice hairy ass on me. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I recommend everybody listen to the audiobook by John Mulaney. Like, we, yep. we haven't even talked about half the things that are yes, on it. Yes, like it's, it's wonderful. If you're looking for something you can just listen to, like, 10, 10 minutes or so in the car, mm-hmm. uh, definitely do that. Honestly, yeah, highly recommend it. So, Fantastic yeah. stuff. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. If you have so far, uh, be sure to follow us on, if you're listening on YouTube, subscribe and like and comment and do all that good stuff. If you have any recommendations, you can email them to us. Uh, at upyouralleypod at gmail.com. But let's figure out what we're going to be talking about next week. Jake, what you got for me? So, buddy. What are we doing? There was another game that I didn't speak about oh, that I also got. What are we doing? You're playing a video game. And okay. it's on your PlayStations. Better it's be. It's on your... Yeah, it's on PlayStation. All right. It's called Thank Goodness You're Here. Thank Goodness You're Here? Thank like goodness the you're improv here. game? Is there an improv game called Thank Goodness You're Here? Thank God You're Here. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's an improv game, but uh, I'm going to say yes. Okay. <laughs> yes and yes and because I'm also <laughs> Im- uh, improv <laughs> improv jokes. I read truth and comedy. There I know go. what I'm doing. Yeah. Don't close. I would say this is one of the funniest games I've played in a long ass time. Really? It's pretty short. It's very cute, and it is so funny. Huh. So I look forward to you playing it. It's very British. There's a choice. Oh, I love that. Where you can keep them using the uh, specific dialect of the con- of the town that you're in, huh. so that you cannot understand them. Gross. But you can leave on English subtitles. That's going to be my second playthrough. I played through with English. Uh, one thing that I think so we'll- is, it, is it like Ghost of Tsushima, where you can replay with like Kurosawa mode, where it's all in Japanese. That's what I'm going to do. White. I'm going to play it again, and I'm going to play it with the dialect on oh, this time. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, one of the uh, Actors in it is Matt Berry. Love Matt Berry. Yeah. Yeah. And he's he's a standout. There's a big push for him. I keep saying, uh, Lord of the Rings, it's on your TV ads that it turned back on. The <laughs> first episode of Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Do you have any interest in that show? No. Not Never watched the first season? No. I watched the uh, the first episode. It came out today. First episode was, eh, it was okay. I'm not interested in okay. Eh. <laughs> Got to see uh, Kirdan for the first time in live action. Kirdan the Shipwright down in the Grey Havens. What? One of the only <laughs> one of the only elves with a beard because he was ancient enough. I think he was brought forth by Manwe in like the first calling of the elves. I, oh, what? Yep. Mm-hmm. One of these We can go deep <laughs> if you want to. I, I learned He's so name. old as an elf, he has a beard. He knows Essentially. He knows what's I got it. I got it. I got his name. Don't worry. Kirdan? Ga- Galad Gal- Galadriel? Galadriel's a lady. Are you thinking about Gilgalad, the high king of the elves? No, the guy who helped make the rings. Celebrimbor. Celebrimbor. I was wrong. God damn, damn it. it. I watch these movies every year. I still don't know their names. Movies. I watch it with nerds. Okay, I watch it with enough. other people that have, at least half of them have a Tolkien tattoo. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're big into That's it. That's what they think about Kyrie. But the way you brought that up is everyone's saying Matt Berry should play Tom Bombadil. When they remake the Lord of the Rings, and I was like, "Yeah, I could definitely see yeah, that. I could see that. Absolutely, yeah, he's a he's a big funny guy." Tom Bombadil is the standout character. <laughs> apparently, well, apparently, he's in the second season. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Ooh, yeah, you so grab me there. Um, and I think Radagast is in it too, but I don't know. I'm curious to see how they're going. I really like the guy that's playing Sauron. He's very weirdly handsome. <laughs> I think he's evil handsome. Where you're just like, ooh, he's got he, a big head. That's all I'm hearing. So he's got a big head and a stretched. Uh, not really. He's a little uh, more... Uh, like Walton Goggins. He kind of looks like uh, Viggo Mortensen. Like he's oh, okay. that kind of evilly okay. handsome. Roguish. He's roguish. <laughs> so you Strider-ish. picked something that you said was uh, short, cute, and funny. Yeah. I have something for you mm-hmm. that is long, mm-hmm. depressing, mm-hmm. and very serious. That's stuff that I like. I know. Available on streaming. Came out last week. Available to stream now on Max. Something mm-hmm. we had talked about but never got around to. The documentary? Nope. Horizon, an American Saga, part one. Ooh, exciting. Kevin Costner's Western Epic. Cool. Uh, it's available to stream now on Max, so I'm like, oh, it's time we do it. I had one friend watch it. Uh-huh. His, I didn't read a lot of what he wrote. He wrote two pages of notes. Jesus Christ. I only read the first note, which was, he said, I wish I saw it in theaters. Uh-huh. And I was like, okay. Oh, I watched the first hour. You know, I got down in, my, in the actual podcast studio, not your couch. Uh, I've got the projector set up. Uh-huh. I watched the first hour just on my TV, and I'm like, nope, going downstairs, and I threw it on the projector mm. to watch it. It's 
it's shot amazingly. Like Kevin Costner, That's just exciting. as a director, is he's he's better than he has any right to be. I'm, I'm great uh, action's good. I don't. I can understand why it didn't make as much money as yeah. they wanted it to because there's. I don't think there's a. It's a very. It's weird that a grand epic like this is a niche film. Yeah. Like big epics like this have the same audience as like a little indie art house movie now because no one really cares about big sweeping gorgeous establishing shots and shit like that mm-hmm. that are filmed like on location. Yeah. As far as like the main audience does. I would have to agree. Yeah. yeah. People want But yeah, it's on your X. Avengers. So we're going to you're going to watch Horizon. I'm going to play Thank goodness you're here. Thank goodness you're here. Uh, thank you to Jimmy for doing all of our artwork, including the new artwork of my new uh, YouTube thumbnail. Yes, sir. That's up there for my new YouTube I video about the Elden Ring and the Appalachian Trail. I did watch your video, sir. Uh huh. It, it was really good. Oh, thank you, buddy. It was very, very good. Uh huh. I enjoyed it a lot. Did I tell you why this one got flagged by YouTube? I, did you find it? No, it got appealed. It's on appeal right now. Oh, okay, good. So apparently, this one was. Uh, Election interference in South Africa. I don't even recall when that happened. The, well, the election in South Africa was in May. Well, not that part. But when you talk about an election in South Africa... You think in an eight-minute video about the Elden Ring, yeah, I wouldn't have time to fit in misinformation about the South African elections. That's what I'm trying... I was like racking my brain. I was like, when did South Africa have anything? It's now you, this is flagged. If you play it... I'll have you know. If you play it backwards, yeah. it goes <laughs> in to all the South of African you, you stuff. Got, Two flagged yeah. videos now. I don't know, man. I'm, what can I say? I'm a bad boy of YouTube. Yes, you so, are. Someone's got to do it. What a grab. All right. Uh, yeah, thank you to Jimmy for doing all of our artwork. Thank you to our buddies, brother Bill, for doing the music. Jake, thanks for having me over. Love you, buddy. Love you, buddy. Bye.